So today we're talking about in Matthew 19 where Yeshua says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. I don't know about you, but I've heard that this is an idiom, an eye of the needle isn't to be taken literally. It means um, these little gates that were in the city of Jerusalem that animals would come into. As the story goes, there would be a larger gate that people would pass through, and then a smaller gate where the animals can kind of go in and out. And in my mind, I'm thinking of like a, a cat door or a dog door, you know, that kind of flips back and forth. So when my husband and I were in Israel uh, for Sukkot of 2019, we set on a journey to find these gates. And by the way, these gates were, these supposed gates were called the eye of the needle. Okay. So we were going to photograph them and I was going to write about them and it was going to be great because I love this story. You know, the camel is large. It's too large to fit the small gate unless it gets down on its knees and unburdens itself of all of its packages, you know, because they were pack animals. And I loved how that story would preach. You know, that's like us coming to God. We have to bow down and then we have to unburden ourselves of all of our sins. Wait a minute. That part's not right. We don't actually have to unburden ourselves of our sins before we come to God. And in fact, the very first sermon I ever heard, I was 26 years old. I was a single mom to a one-year-old. Friends of mine had invited me to church. Finally, I went and the sermon was, you do not have to be perfect before God will accept you and accept you into his family. It's the first time I've heard, the first time I had ever heard that. Nobody had ever told me that I could be accepted just the way I was, much less accepted by the king of the universe. And that was it. That's all I needed. I was, I was done for. I was saved. So now the whole idea of the camel having to unburden himself, going through the eye of the needle, that absolutely cannot be an analogy for us going to heaven because we don't have to unburden ourselves first. God does that for us. Now, those of you who have done the idiom lesson on kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven, you may already kind of know where this is going, right? Because there we learned that that is an idiom, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. And it doesn't mean heaven up in the sky. It means God's rule and reign right here on the earth. The other thing that was really interesting that I had learned is that some scholars say that it's not a camel through the eye of a needle. It's a thick rope. And the reason they say that is apparently the Aramaic word for thick rope sounds very similar to the Greek word for camel. Translation issues, that is totally above my pay grade. But um, the bottom line, either way, whether, whether it's a camel through the eye of a needle or a thick rope through the eye of a needle, has nothing to do with gates called the eye of the needle in Jerusalem. They don't exist. Um, it was more like Yeshua using exaggeration or him using hyperbole. And he was saying literally whether it was a rope or a camel going through a literal eye of a needle. He was talking about something that was really impossible. So what was it that he was talking about if it's not um, us unburdening ourselves to or having to get rid of our wealth in order to be saved? What he's saying is that when someone is holding on to their wealth the way that they should be holding on to God, when what they have, what they own, the possessions, when they think that they're actually theirs to do with whatever they please, instead of understanding that we're stewards of God's wealth, 
then we won't be effective messengers of his kingdom on earth today. We're here to mend the world. And we learned that Hebrew phrase, tikkun ha'olam, back in the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven lesson. We're here to repair the world. When we hold on to our wealth and trust in the security of our wealth, the way we should trust in God for our security, we're not going to be effective um, repairers in this world. In this world. When we hold on to our things and think that we have control over it and forget that everything that we have comes from God, then we're not going to be effective on this earth. It is impossible to have those attitudes and be effective on this earth as his stewards. But remember, a couple of verses down from this Matthew passage, Yeshua says, with man, this is impossible, but with God, he can change our attitudes. He can help us see the importance of clinging to him, not our wealth. He can help us to understand that the material possessions that we have, our riches, belong to him. And he can help us to have a better relationship with them, know who to give them to, you know, that kind of thing. So that, you know, with, with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. And that is the real story behind this particular phrase that turns out it's not an idiom after all. I'll see you next time.